Hello, good morning. Uh, welcome to Curiosity. This is September episode, episode number 23. Uh, this is a science show presented by Young Academy of India. I hope you had a very productive August, isn't it? Uh, from my side, I completed that book, uh, Curiosity, the book about soft skills and uh, you know the critical thinking. So uh, probably it will be released in the next three, four months time. So stay tuned. And uh, so many things have happened. What moved the, the world of science? So we will see that in this show, right? And uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Tokyo Paralympics is going on when I'm recording this uh, particular episode. And you see that uh, we have uh, Pavina Patel. Uh, she got, uh, you know, the silver medal in the table tennis, isn't it? Class four table tennis. So fantastic achievement. And uh, whenever I see this kind of, uh, you know, events, especially Paralympics, Olympics itself is a global event, isn't it? So, and uh, yes, so globalism, isn't it? That is actually the cosmopolitanism. We have only one planet Earth. We have to be taking care of it, isn't it? That is what is uh, relayed by Olympics. So now Paralympics, especially, uh, you know, each uh, each of the games, when I'm seeing these games, uh, I, I feel immense thankful to the world of science because it's because of the scientific research, friends that they could able to, uh, you know, the, the people who suffered polio, for example, Pavina, and she is now able to walk, isn't it? And all those things, the prosthetic limbs and uh, whatever be the case. So, uh, yes, so science work, science does, uh, you know, mysteries, I would like to say. Yes, so that is really interesting. And also the last month, IPCC have released the, uh, you know, the, the landmark report. IPCC, by the way, is Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. There are 195 member states and they released a, a report, uh, you know, in the last month that is code red for our planet Earth. You know, so in the next few decades, huge swathes of the land suitable for living and farming will burn or drawn. Uh, you know, it's going to be really tough, friends. And also uh, only a fraction of the current living species is going to survive. Uh, so many species is going to extinct that is uh, one uh, you know major impact that is one of the predicament in this report and the temperature will reach 1.5 degrees celsius above the last century you know by 2040 that is what the ipcc says so we really have to uh, adopt a sustainable lifestyle to combat this global warming isn't it and what did i learn in the last month's uh, top five picks the first one is about beavers you know the rodents so the beavers are not well known for uh, a dam building isn't it the, the animals that can build the dam and now what we know is that why are they building the dam it's not that they're engineer or they they want to uh, you know they want to change the flow of the river they're building in response to uh, the voice you know the, the sound of uh, water flowing they don't like it so they want to stop that sound of flowing water that is the reason why they're uh, you know the researchers have done a fantastic experiment that uh, you know so on captivity they just relayed this sound uh, through the speakers and then beavers started building their dams to stop the sound from coming through the speakers really interesting isn't it i never knew that next one i learned is about apple apples are not true to seed you know that means that if you take out the seed of the apple uh, that itself is poisonous you see it has got cyanide and if you plant it then the variety of that apple tree is not going to be the same as that apple so whatever the apple it is so the same apple you're not going to get it if you uh, seed the seed of the uh, apple very interesting isn't it I, again I, I never knew that in 2012 a very interesting thing have happened a British man uh, his name was Wesley Carrington uh, he bought a metal detector, you know, so the metal detector is very interesting, right? I even I didn't know before that how it works. So it's basically uh, it works by electromagnetic induction, like induction cooker, you see. So magnetic field, uh, that is why the metal detectors, especially in the airport, is like round. So it has got the, the induction, you see, the magnetic field is being created from the electricity. And this magnetic field moves towards object, for example, our body. And this, if the body has got like, a, a, for example, my mom has got a cardiac pacemaker. So the pacemaker has got metal. So this metal makes an eddy, 
uh, flaw of the electrons so that makes a, a complementary magnetic field that magnetic field is being detected by this metal detector so that's very interesting right that is how the metal detectors work so this guy bought a metal detector and then out of curiosity he searched his backyard you know and uh, yes so he found an, a metal piece uh, in the soil and then that metal piece turned out to be uh, a very old coin from the Roman age worth 100,000 British pounds so he became instant millionaire so very interesting isn't it the curiosity driven work so by the way this metal detectors can also be used at home especially if you're doing some home project like drilling the wall you can use this stud sensor uh, live wire sensor you know you can easily buy it through amazon or whatever the online shops and this will save a life because if you happen to drill on the concrete where there is a live wire so it's going to be disastrous friends so it's better to make sure that there is no live wire in it isn't it and the next one is about elephants so you know elephants are massive it's so big it's of course the biggest land animal right and when the body size is high of course the mitosis will also increase the mitosis means cell division and with each cell division chances of cancer is also high isn't it so uh, theoretically elephants will be having a very high risk of cancer but that is not the case elephants have a very very low risk of cancer you know so how did it uh, have so that is what I never knew that it has got 20 copies of a very key uh, gene involved with the cancer prevention the gene is called TP53 the uh, you know the guardian angel of uh, cancer the, the tumor suppressor gene uh, called p53 so tp53 is a gene that expresses the p53 protein we have only one copy and if that copy has been hampered by mutation then we are highly uh, you know we have extremely high risk of developing cancer and at the same time these elephants have got 20 copies of tp53 very interesting isn't it and there is a paradox related paradox is called uh, pesos paradox so it's an observation that large animals like uh, elephants and blue whales and rhinos etc rarely seem to develop the cancer uh, the reason purported reason yet another reason is that uh, the, the local cancer will develop but then cancer kills its own local uh, you know body so it can never sustain to progress to the whole of the uh, uh, massive body you know that is yet another purported explanation for this phenomenon pesos paradox and fifth very interesting story which i learned uh, last month is about the uh, in in the us you know uh, maybe it's the same com uh, phenomenon is same everywhere the parents are 12.7 percentage less likely to be happier than childless couple uh, you know the the, the couple who uh, out of choice they they feel that they don't want to have any child they tend to be much more happier than uh, parents with with biological ch a child you know so that's very interesting isn't it so that is also I was thinking like having a child will increase your happiness but that is not a trend in uh, in the Western society probably that is same elsewhere too we have to do uh, a lot more research on that and uh, last month's what are the discoveries let's see it one by one first is psychology and behavior related uh, discoveries one study suggests that feeling sexually desired by one's partner is more important for men than uh, what we think. So men always look for validations to see that they are desired by their partner. So if you are a woman, if you have a, a male partner, so compliment him with a very interesting statement that you look beautiful, you are wearing, your dress is fantastic. So those things work. That is what the new study says half of the adults with ADHD ADHD is by the way is attention deficit hyperactive disorder they had substance abuse problem that is they are much more likely to become addicted with the uh, uh, you know the alcohol or uh, drugs soft drugs or hard drugs including the smoking you know very important isn't it the, the finding is really interesting and uh, it has got repercussions Again, another story is about the exercise and depression. Exercise blunts the craving for the alcohol among young problematic drinkers. So uh, alcohol cessation, uh, one of the very interesting strategy would be asking the addict to go for rigorous cardiovascular exercises. So 
again very interesting isn't it another uh, interesting uh, story for the, from the last month is that feeling like leisure is wasteful and unproductive may lead to less happiness and higher levels of stress and depression this is a very large scale study with 1310 adults involved in this study so if you are going for a leisure if you are enjoying if you are watching a tv for entertainment it's absolutely fine but the moment you think that this activity is going to have an impact on your productivity then uh, it will backfire very interesting isn't it a toxic workplace is related with depression that is yet another very interesting study you know so companies that fail to reward or acknowledge their employees for hard work and impose unreasonable demands on workers and do not give them autonomy are placing their staff on a much higher greater risk of depression so it's a very important study next study is about uh, in men higher wages predicted a higher proportion of being married <laughs> very interesting men with uh, who are earning high are likely to get married at the same time the reverse is true for women you know so women in a high paying job are less likely to get married because they enjoy their autonomy probably that is the reason or uh, men find it uh, uh you know uh, uh, uh they don't find them attractive in the sense that they are looking for a submissive partner you know so that's very interesting story next is humanities politics policies and arts related stories St uh, first story is from my own group here in central university of punjab uh, one of our study again it's a, a large sample so more than 1000 enrollees were there uh, the study was conducted during pandemic last last year you know and the study got published only last week two weeks back in frontiers in education so students perception for the online learning from india during covid-19 pandemic so that is the the story is all about it reveals something called digital divide what does that mean is a divide between haves and have not some students have uh, you know economically a privileged group have access to devices and uh, uh, a faster internet and these students rated uh the percep th their perception was much better for the digital education concerned uh, comparing with the uh, students from lower socio economic groups plus uh, ladies you know so the, the boys are tend to have a better access to a uh, laptop for example while girls are more prone to have mobile phones yet another interesting study is that more than 80 percentage of the students from india access their online contents through mobile phones you know so most of the mooc developers around the world for example edx and coursera they develop their contents tailor made for computers you know either laptop or a personal computer isn't it a desktop computer at the same time most of the students don't have computers to access it so that's a landmark finding i would say of course my own study another interesting uh, uh, reveal of our study is that students perceive synchronous that is recorded learning much better than uh, you know asynchronous learning much better than the synchronous are live you know so live streaming most of the classes are live isn't it either in zoom or uh, google meet so those live lecture the problem is that if uh, the students happen to miss it there is no way to access it again miss uh, because of the uh, problems in connectivity for for instance and also if it's recorded they can view any number of times so recorded lectures are much better but it's give a, a lot of headache for the teachers to record it and render it upload into the youtube so it takes time and efforts like what i'm doing that right now in the curiosity you know i'm recording and then i'm uploading to the youtube right but it uh, you know it pays huge dividend that is what the study Uh, reports by the way this is a single author study i did all the work you know uh, including the sample collection analysis writing the paper everything isn't it so it's it's a it's a challenge but i really enjoyed this work next is the american dream is slowly fading away as the research indicates that the economic growth has been distributed more broadly in germany so german wealth distribution is more or less uh, you know equal at the same time in the us it is extremely biased and extremely unequal you know and that is the reason why american dream uh, the migrants are being attracted to work in the us uh, they are no more attracted you see it's slowly fading away that is a very interesting uh, study 
Next is that uh, in the in in uh, UK there is a city called Liverpool. So the li city of Liverpool had the problems with sun earlier. The sun is a tabloid, you know, not really relevant. Uh, uh, you know, it's not a, uh, a trustworthy newspaper. It's a tabloid. So Liverpool they banned sun because they had some issue earlier in 1989 because of their coverage with the Hillsborough disaster. So it's a politically motivated coverage. And that led the city administration to ban the tabloid there. And unknowingly, because the sun is banned, what happened is that they were against the Brexit. You know, Brexit is a basically a landmark judgment. Uh, you know, the, the, the uh, population, the majoritarian view that the UK should not be part of the EU, isn't it? So the Liverpool residents objected that Brexit, you know? So that means that there is something relation with sun. Reading sun uh, will uh, make you a lot more rightist and they you make you vote for the Brexit. So that is ultimately that has happened. So media has a tremendous impact on the way we perceive uh, the current affairs, you see. So Sun has played a key role in the Brexit and not just Sun, rest of the media too. So not merely it's a phenomenon, I suspect it's everywhere in the world, here in India too. So media can uh, substantially change the way we perceive the political and ideological affairs in our daily life. So beware of these biases. And the next story is about anxiety disorder. The symptoms are more common among those with left-wing political views in the Great Britain. Very interesting. If you're leftist, you tend to be more anxious. You tend to be more, uh, perhaps more stressed. The cortisol level tend to be higher and more riskier to develop depression because you, you're always worried about uh, income, uh, you know, inequality, which I, I covered just now. And also many other kinds of things, you know, that you keep on worrying, you know. So people with clinical symptoms of anxiety disorder tend to express higher concerns about the economic inequality and the environment, you know, and climate change, all these things. Uh, if you're left wing, you tend to be more concerned about the climate. So that's also, that is what the, the new research published in the Journal of Psychology last month. I, I, I feel it, it's very pertinent, you know. So if you are left wing, so, uh, you know, uh, you have to be worried about uh, the negativity bias, the media. So, you know, preemptively exposing to some positive news might have an uh, impact on your life. And on the other hand, if you are a rightist, if you are a conservationist, then conservatives are more likely to be happier. At the same time, conservatives are more, uh, you know, uh, more prone for believing in fake news and conspiracy theories. We have seen that. Next story is that researchers analyzing the billboard hits, that is basically the, the music top hits from 1958 to 2019. What they found is that the most successful songs used harmonic surprises. So that means that the music deviates from what listener expect. So it's more or less kind of similar, but with some twist in the end or in between, you know like O. Henry stories. So O. Henry short stories have extremely interesting mysterious twists in the end, right? So more or less it's kind of similar, but with some, uh, you know, unexpected twist. That is what it makes the top hits in music. That is very interesting, isn't it? So again, it reminds me of an article that uh, I read the other day about uh, what makes the people to buy new products like in, uh, in Amazon or whatever the products be. So the conclusion of that study is that uh, people want things that are mostly familiar, you know, it's not like completely new, they're mostly familiar, but with some novelty. Again, psychology is not a novelty bias, you know, so too much familiarity is boring. At the same time, too much novelty is threatening. So it's give and take, zero sum, you know, you need a fine balance, little bit of novelty uh, with mostly it's conservative. So that kind of a product design, very interesting, isn't it? Coming next is technology physics related stories. An engineered glue inspired by the barnacle cement can seal the bleeding organs in 10 to 15 seconds. So uh, especially if you are taking some aspirin or other blood thinners, uh, you are at a high risk of bleeding, you know, bleeding related injuries. So you can have this, uh, you know, glue handy. So the, the within 15 seconds, 
it stops the bleeding very interesting isn't it? the barnacle inspired uh, you know inspired uh, this kind of uh, glues are coming again and again of course something no, nothing new it's been on for last five decades you know uh, uh, the only concern about the barnacle inspired uh, the glue or the barnacle derived glue is that it needs water you know so it, it's a hydrophilic and unless it has water it cannot work but the blood has got water so it works you know no problem with that and the next uh, is about the biodiversity environment evolution and anthropology related stories Again, from my group here in Central University of Punjab in Batina, we discovered a new species of marine green algae called Acetabularia, you know, Acetabularia jelakanyakae, which I suspected to be Acetabularia acetabulum earlier, but it is not really, you know. And we found this one from Andaman Archipelago uh, near Port Blair, you know. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is a jelakanyakae, that, that name, the epithet is inspired from Jalakanyaka, that means uh, goddess of ocean or mermaid and uh, one of the main reason why I named it so is because of the influence of Little Mermaid, the fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen, the Danish uh, the, the, the writer, you know. So I saw that uh, Little Mermaid statue in Copenhagen in my 2016 visit and it's so beautiful, it's so intricate. If you have seen that image, I will show you in the end of the show, you know. And this is the first species discovery in the last 36 years in, uh, I mean, the algal species discovery from Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And it has attracted wide media coverage, including the BBC, BBC report on the front page, so as the Independent, the British newspaper, and so many uh, international and national media. So, uh, yeah, it's an exciting uh, story. It's uh, our seventh species discovery, friends, you know. Uh, this is the sixth marine uh, algal species discovery and uh, we also discovered one species of moss from Antarctica. Last episode we covered that, right? Brian Parathi and Say. Uh, the next story is yet another species discovery this time. It's a whale, a whale with four limbs which can walk. You know, it's a transitionary fossil. Usually this kind of whale with four limbs have been discovered from India and Pakistan. Almost 99% of such fossils are from Pakistan and India, you know. But out of this region, discovering is pretty uh, rare. And this discovery comes from Egypt, you know, uh, which has lived 43 million years back. That the name, uh, the binomial name of this uh, newly discovered species is Phyomycetus anubis. Uh, by the way, in, way back in 2011, from entirely different continents of South America, the Peru, uh, they, the scientists have discovered a webbed food, uh, you know, whale with four limbs. Uh, the name of that was Perogosetus pacificus, you know. So this is also exciting piece of story, right? I'll show you the image in the end of this uh, episode. Then the climate crisis, friends. I, I told you in the early on about IPCC report. Now that the scientists have spotted the warning signs of Gulf Stream collapse, by the way, Gulf Stream is a warm water current, you know, so uh, it has got a huge impact on the climate of the entire world, friends. So the, the Gulf Stream in, in the Gulf area of the, you know, near the Florida and Cuba, right? Cuba is like the epicenter of the Gulf Stream. So if this Gulf Stream is collapsed, what is going to happen? Marine ecosystems uh, will have huge impact on the entire uh, area as well as the entire, uh, you know, the Atlantic Ocean. The reason is that nutrient-rich water from the Arctic uh, will not be able to brought up, you know, uh, uh, to the shallower depths, thus uh, fueling the trophic webs. So the, the trophic webs will be uh, impacted because of this uh, upwell, upwelling will be impacted, you know. So that is the, the, one of the major problems. Another main impact is going to be uh, destabilizing the terrestrial regions too because uh, the global ocean currents are intricately related with El Nino and La Nina, which will have a wide ranging impact. Even the monsoon from in India will be impacted, you know, very, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, tough predicament, isn't it? Next is that next story is about permafrost in uh, Siberia. So this permafrost are thawing because of the global warming. It creates a ticking methane bomb of the region so methane by the way is uh, it is something like uh, 
log scale you know so it will be a very slow release in the early on but suddenly it will spike up it's an exponential way of releasing the methane and methane you know it's one of the uh, most potent greenhouse gas you know and next story is a scientist figured out uh, why olive sea snakes approach the divers if you're a scuba diver the sea snakes can approach the divers why do they approach because they think that the, di the diver is a potential mate <laughs> you know so it's a mating it's a sexual opportunity for this uh, venomous this is a highly pot you know venomous snake so very interesting isn't this it's published in nature scientific report from the last month so a uh, majority of cases involve lustful male sea snakes unaware that the divers aren't extra large females so it's not female but they are just a uh, you know uh, a human divers so very interesting isn't it another story is from uh, anthropology uh, you might know the triangle right the the right angle triangle there is a very famous rule called uh, pythagoras rule or pythagoras theorem uh, but the latest study what they, we found is that ancient babylonians understood the key concept in the geometry including how to make the precise right angle triangles much earlier than the greek uh, you know the mathematician of the Pythagoras around thousand years earlier uh, you know uh, before the Pythagoras so that is very interesting right so uh, yeah so we now we think that it's Pythagoras but Pythagoras did a fantastic work that he proved it that hypothesis how it works so you know in mathematics a proof of this axiomatic uh, principles are really important right so that is why the credit goes to Pythagoras but yeah it's fantastic right the Babylonians so by the way, Babylonia is a current day Iraq, you know. So unfortunately, Iraq is in a terrible situation now, post-American invasion, but it's now they are uh, recovering, you know. But uh, Iraq, Iraq uh, war, the, the, the current day Iraq, if you turn back in century, Babylonia was uh, very rich, right, with the culture and, and now as we see philosophy as well, uh, you know, and the mathematics too. Next is about giraffe. You know, the giraffe may be socially as complex as elephant. That is what the new study says. And uh, it was published in uh, Royal Society's, uh, you know, biological letters. So a review of earlier research shows that giraffes have markings of the social creatures, including friendship, daycare, and grandmothers. Fantastic, isn't it? So it's something like chimpanzees and elephants. So earlier we were not knowing it. So by the way, it's it shows that, you know, unless you actually look at very carefully uh, many intricate patterns of the animal, uh, you social life and animal behavior, you will never know that. So another very interesting study is about the cats. Uh, the, you know, the, the social skill of the cat is much higher than dogs. That is what the new study says. But you need to have a, a, a tremendous amount of patience to see, to watch the cat's social life or cat's social skills. You know, another study published last month is about the Filipinos, you know, the, from Philippines. So not, not all Filipinos, but uh, a subgroup of Filipino, you know, it's called Aeta. It's an indigenous tribe. So they're descended from ancient species of human beings who lived during the last ice age, the Denisovan. Very interesting, right? They have a, a Denisovan uh, DNA, uh, the most of the Denisovan DNA. Uh, you know, they, they are the race with the, the maximum amount of Denisovan DNA in human genome. So that's a direct proof that these tribes, the, uh, you know, Aeta tribes are actually originated from uh, that, uh, you know, the ancient species of uh, hu human being. It's not a Homo sapiens, you see. It's a Denisovan, right? Very interesting, isn't it? Next is medicine, health and diagnostics and nutrition related stories. Small blobs of the human brain tissue have been grown in the dish, uh, you know, with the, uh, that actually the tissue actually shows that rudimentary eyes and this eyes can respond to the light too, you know, uh, very interesting, isn't the tissue culture, of course, the pluripotent stem cell, they programmed it with a recipe of various hormones and other signaling molecules and then they found that this development uh, it's actually developing into the human eyes and the brain. Fantastic, isn't it? Uh, yes, so the, uh, this sort of, uh, you know, the, the study, uh, I mean, the, the stem cell uh, re, uh, have a tremendous potential. Even you can culture these organs, isn't it? 
and even beef you can make this lab grown meat like beef uh, you know in a more sustainable manner by this kind of uh, a cell culture isn't it so very interesting stem cell culture is fantastic next is fecal transplant fecal transplant is that yucky we covered in the curiosity so many times i love this concept the reason is that feces contains microbes it's a human microflora you know so microbiome because intestine harbors a large number of bacteria so what now the research says that young uh, people's feces if you introduce this feces with the microbes to the older people and then the older people tend to become younger <laughs> you know it's an aging work very interesting isn't it so the microbes do have impact on the how you age you know so yeah so <laughs> very very interesting so uh, well maybe uh, uh, the microbes have impact on the mitochondria and the telomere telomerase you know well we don't really know the intricacies but it works well this was in um, the mice uh, you know they introduce the old mice uh, they force the old mice to eat the excrements of the young mice to see how the aging pattern so how about in humans you know of course there are companies already uh, it's called seed seed is a famous american company seed.com check it out you can buy these capsules from the, the seed fantastic isn't it such a curiosity driven concept it, ha it has got ramifications we covered earlier also about the sports you know uh, like uh, uh, you know the, the sports have got the drugs right that performance enhancing drugs doping isn't it and like testosterone and uh, instead of doping uh, now nowadays what they're doing is that they're taking this microbiome the fe fecal transplantation the fecal bacteria uh, the transplantation from the high performing uh, you know high performing athletes if you take it then your performance will be improved very interesting isn't it next story is that the people who have recovered from covid 19 including those no longer reporting any symptoms exhibit significant cognitive defects so this is a large sample size 80000 samples you know and uh, it's a it's a very large study they did it in conjunction with the bbc's uh, horizon uh, the program you know scientific documentary series so it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's gonna have a huge uh, impact on uh, the human lives you know what to expect so uh, take adequate precautions wear mask friends next story is again about the covid 19 it's a cdc study the scientists examined hundreds of kentucky residents who had been sick with the covid 19 through the june 2021 and what they found is that unvaccinated people had 2.34 times the odds of reinfection compared to those who were fully vaccinated. So, you know, so unvaccinated people with reinfection means uh, those people who recovered from the virus, you know, COVID-19, there is an extremely high chance that they get the virus back again. So if you are exposed already, if you already recovered, successfully recovered from COVID-19, please consider getting vaccinated in light of this study. So there is, the risk is tremendous, 2.34 times, you know, so that is very, very substantial, I would say. Uh, yeah, next is that despite social mythology, there's a lot of myths surrounding the testosterone, you know. So the myth is that the testosterone, you know, the testosterone, the male sex hormone, uh, if you inject the testosterone, you become more successful. That is a myth, you know, of course, the, uh, performance enhancing drug too isn't it so if you uh, you know if you have a lot of testosterone you become uh, successful so that is the myth you know if you improve if you boost the testosterone you can become successful but that is not the case it's about uh, you know it's a statistical uh, corroboration isn't it confounding so correlation does not mean causation that's a, one of the f important concept of statistics so if you see that testosterone and success are associated that doesn't mean that testosterone is causing success it could be the other way also that is what this studies revealed success is causing higher testosterone if you are successful with your life if you're happy if you're achieving if you're productive then chances are high that your testosterone levels are naturally high not the vice versa very interesting isn't it and this allowed me to think about an old study about birds which I read long back so it's that the more colorful feathers 
you know the birds with much more colorful feathers the testosterone levels are high so what is that actually happening so is it the testosterone levels are causing the the plumage to be colorful or vice versa so it's vice versa because the uh, you know the scientists what they did is they colored those male birds without that colorful plumage they colored with the very interesting uh, patterns you know to mimic it's a biomimicry right and then they found that after a few days they found uh, are they actually the testosterone are increasing yes they found that their uh, you know increased testosterone levels so very interesting the physiological changes have been found interesting isn't it that's all for this month's uh, uh, the discoveries and uh, news stories now coming the next part of the curiosity is about observances you know the UN general observances. There are several observances in the next month. Uh, the number one observance, friends, is you know I will show you my. Uh, this is my uh, you know the journal, you know bullet journal, and this is this month's journal. Uh, it's as you can see, this is the, the spread. I have I always start new month with a new spread, and this month's spread is themed around autumnal equinox. Well, here I'm living in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm sure many of the viewers are from the Southern Hemisphere. For example, South Africa or Southern America or uh, Australia, right? So it's not autumnal equinox for you. It is called spring equinox. So instead of this uh, Northern bias, I prefer to call it as September equinox, you know? So yeah, September equinox is the biggest event. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's falling on 23rd of this month, September equinox. Fifth is Charity, World Charity Day. Seventh is Clean Air and Blue Skies. You know, again, that is the illustration has got that theme. I'll show you that. Eighth is World Literacy Day. So we really have to increase the, the literacy, the groundwork, you know, because literacy and education has got a cascading effect on almost all matters of human life, including Human Development Index and Human Livelihood Index. You know, everything. Literacy is really important, friends. Ninth is day to protect education from attack from the recent happening in uh, Afghanistan and uh, other places around the world. Friends, uh, you know, these educational institutions are more and more targeted. We should stop it. Education uh, is, you know, it is harmless. I mean, educating the youth will always improve the country's, uh, the human development, you know, index substantially. So we should stop targeting the political and ideological attacks on education institutions should be stopped. That is a key message of this ninth, you know. Fifteenth is Democracy Day. I told you many times democracy is so much related to scientific methodology. So the, how the science work and how democracy works are quite related, you know. Sixteenth is uh, the World Day for Prevention of, uh, Preservation of Ozone Layer or Prevention of ozone layer damaging uh, chlorofluorocarbons and other halocarbons you know so these halogens uh, with uh, chlorinated and uh, fluorinated carbon so this will have a huge impact on the ozone layer i happen to be you know i was privileged to be part of indian antarctic mission and in antarctica the ground reality is that the the, the uva and uvb radiations are tremendous there because the ozone layer it was decreasing but it started increasing because of the Kyoto Protocol, you might know, it started decreasing, but now the pattern has reversed. It started increasing again, you know? So we really need to stop polluting. So be careful when you make the consumer choices, like which fridge to buy or which air conditioner to buy. Check out the refrigerant, which gas which they are using, and what are its environmental ramifications, you know? 17th is Patient Safety Day. You know, the, the patient safety is really important, right? With the medical procedures, uh, how, how safe are the patients? So it's really, really important, right? If you're a healthcare worker, think about it. All these things have got a tremendous impact on uh, to make the world a better place, you know? Uh, 18th is equal pay day. So equal work deserve equal pay. So that, that is all about the inclusivity and gender equality, isn't it? The male and female. Unfortunately, even today in many countries around the world, same work if the male does, the male earns substantially higher wages than the female. We should stop this practice altogether. 21 is day for peace, world day for peace, you know. 
and 23rd is sign language day you know unfortunately here in india we don't have indian sign language but we are following the british sign language and other 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 languages around the world again there is no international standard on sign language so by the way sign language is the language by uh, gestures conveyed for uh, deaf uh, you know uh, learners isn't it and uh, to communicate to the, with the deaf people that is very very important that we need to improve our sign language uh, communication skills 26 is total elimination of nuclear weapons so last month in august was 6th and 9th was hiroshima hiroshima and nagasaki day you know and we need to eliminate the complete elimination of nuclear weapons is the only answer to uh, achieve that global sustainable global peace you know so yeah so the, the nuclear uh, you know the power struggle and global diplomacy by uh, increasing this kind of uh, nuclear weapon is never a good idea we need to completely eliminate it so that is what this day for 26 27 is world tourism day 29th is awareness of food loss and waste very very important the food loss how much food we are wasting you know so we need to stop it isn't it so that is the day for 30th is maritime day uh, you know the importance of oceans not of oceans day but maritime day especially about the maritime uh, laws and maritime you know shipping all these things are important right so that is what the 30th is for and 30th is also the world day for translation so translation is also extremely important especially here in india you know many of these uh, our regional languages uh, don't have adequate translation the translated works are missing you know so world literary legends as well as science you know the science communication some of the famous books like carl sagan's cosmos one of my all-time favorite we don't have translations in indian languages you know if you can devote your time on translating these works available in indian regional languages you're doing a great favor to our posterity so consider it Next is obsolescences uh, concerned with astronomy, astro related. No, if you uh, if you are like me, who enjoy going, uh, you know, on the top, uh, usually I go to the terrace of my house in the evenings of these days. You know, so do it. It's it's fantastic. It costs nothing almost. You know, just go uh, even go outside to your, uh, your backyard and watch the celestial movements you know the star and constellations and planets and even the moon you know the craters of the moon you can check it out so uh, all these events are binocular events so i don't even expect you to have a telescope but telescope is so inexpensive around 12,000 rupees you can get a celestron astromaster very nice telescope i suggest all of you to have a look on any of this uh, small telescope refractor or reflector or smith cassegrain type you know uh, uh, otherwise also no problem if you have a small binocular also you can see most of these events and also to aid you to uh, to see to spot where these planets are or constellations are I suggest you a free app uh, for Android as well as for iPhone it's called Stellarium my current favorite app is called Stellarium yeah so it works with the uh, uh, gravitation sensor and also accelerometer you know first uh, that is the the September 1st is origin meteor shower 9th is uh, the day to observe mercury uh, second second of September 9th is epsilon Persidus meteor shower 10th is moon Venus conjunction 14th is the day again to very nice day to observe mercury and uh, 17th is moon saturn conjunction so several conjunctions are there. So conjunctions are nothing but these two objects are very close you know so that you can uh, with one click of photograph you can get both in the same frame and 18th is moon jupiter conjunction you know so and also on 18th if you look at the moon uh, that near the moon whatever is the, the brightest is jupiter on 17th saturn so if you're really clueless to spot where is the saturn and jupiter you can just see it 
21st is the the uh, you know it's one of the uh, famous uh, full moon day and it's called harvest moon because it's in the harvest season here in the northern hemisphere 23rd friends i told you i'm looking forward to that day it's called autumnal equinox you know so the, this is the first sun uh, you know su sunrise in antarctica you know and uh, with this sunrise especially in the south, south pole we, uh, south pole will have 26 month of continuous sunlight from this day onwards okay and march equinox is a day of the first sunset and the only sunset in the southern uh, south pole you know and 27th is sextanid meteor shower so we have got uh, epsilon presiders and sextanid meteor shower in this month so it's good for meteors too coming next is the opportunities for this month so what are the opportunities for the young researchers as well as for the uh, students there are several opportunities i will come to in a short while but we have mentex call and the deadline is 5th september so you may please apply if you're a student or whatever be the profession you know, age limit it's a great uh, option for you to be part of our yai young academy of india uh, you can work with our one of our AI fellows uh, for the two month to do this virtual internship. That is all about this Mentex autumn call, right? And uh, the results will be announced on guess what? Twenty third. Twenty third is autumnal equinox, friends. So on that day, the result will be announced. Yet another very important, uh, you know, opportunity is SUSAT. That is Central University Common Entrance Test. If you want to work in my university where I teach, where I do the research, you are welcome. So it is you said is currently open, and uh, yeah, the deadline is soon approaching in the first week of September. And then the DST Inspire Faculty Award. The call is also open if you are a young faculty below the age of uh, 32 years, with age relaxation of up to 37 for the female. You can apply. I guess it's 37. Check out right. Uh, it's a DST Inspire Faculty Award. I am a proud alumni of this award. I got it way back when I joined here in this university, you know. Uh, yes, so I am the first batch, you know, in 2011 batch of this fac DST Inspire Faculty Award. And especially if you are a, a rank holder in BSc or MSc, uh, you know, or whatever be your uh, degree, MBBS or BTEC uh, or MTEC first rank holder then chance are high that you, you you can get i got a first rank for my bsc university first rank so yeah so there are a lot of opportunities friends so before leaving i'll just show you uh, you know my illustration you can see this this is the illustration of this month friends so this is the the september so uh, we have i told you this month we have got um, clean air and blue skies day that is why i i drawn this uh, blue skies and clean air and uh, i i made this most of this drawing with tombo tombo fudenoske is a brush pen you know this is a pen i can show you this is the pen so the pen itself the tombos uh, you know tombos brand the logo itself is uh, the dragonfly and also September is a month of dragonfly. I saw dragonfly in this morning when I took a, a walk along the canal here in Batinda. You know, thousands and thousands of uh, uh, dragonfly. Dragonfly in Japanese is called tombo, by the way. You know, I, can, I know a little bit of Japanese because I lived in Japan for five years for my PhD. And another uh, interesting feature of this illustration is ozone. Ozone day, you know, ozone protects from the harmful UV radiations, isn't it? And also this one is uh, symbol of equinox from me you know equal day and night isn't it so that is the inspiration for this month spread in my bullet journal and yes yeah, so this is a picture i took in this morning uh tombo <laughs> you know tombo is nothing but a dragonfly you know so it's a macro photo i hope you liked it and yes yeah, so this is that uh you know the whale the blue whale discovery you know the whale a fossil discovery uh, from egypt you know with the uh, four limbs fantastic isn't it i really enjoy looking at this discovery this is a highly curiosity driven friends isn't it so i, I really love these kind of discoveries and this is our own discovery of uh, you know aceta bularia jalakanyakae uh, the the little mermaid inspired 
uh, discovery from Andaman and Nicobar Island. You can see that so intricate, right? So beautiful. And this is my own hands. It's my own photography, the macro photo friends. This is, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is, I'm really happy about this discovery, yes. Uh, it's really definitely one of the best species which I discovered till date, you know. And uh, yes, so uh, I will, thanks for watching for this, this episode of this curiosity. Uh, I hope you really liked it, you know. Uh, Yai uh, has this Facebook page and which actually shows all these observances. I do cover some of my photographs as well as you know, this uh, op uh, opportunities, especially, you know, a lot of uh, JR of course and postdoc course that many of our members do share. So please subscribe to our Facebook page, you know, just like it. And also do subscribe to our, uh, you know, our Google, uh, you know, uh, Google groups, right? So just check out our page and you can click on it. The link is in the show notes. So uh, have a look, right? All the stories, you know, all the links to that story is there in the show notes. So have a look in the, the stories of the show notes of this particular episode. So, yes, so I, I hope you enjoyed this, this episode. If you like it, please do share it in your groups and uh, subscribe to my channel, right? And I will see you soon in, with the October episode of The Curious in the next month. And I wish all of you a very productive and happy uh, September, full of happiness and full of curiosity friends uh, please take care of yourself and if you can please take care of someone else too goodbye